here is my game development setup for developing programs and games for the TRS-80 MC10 micro color computer. And I think it's a pretty cool setup and it makes it really easy for developing games on the actual hardware. So first let's take a little tour here. You can see right up front here we have an external keyboard which is unheard of for the MC10 computer historically. But thankfully, we have some modern enhancements that have been developed for the MC10 that make it really fun to program for and to program on. So you can see this external USB keyboard is connected to the port on the front of this riser. You can see sandwiched between the top and bottom halves of the MC10. This is called a Pi Key mod or a Pi Key 10 modification that is made available from Brendan Donahue and it is a fantastic modification. It allows you to add both dual joystick capabilities to it. You can see the two ports on the front there, as well as right here, there is a micro USB port where you can connect up a regular full-sized USB keyboard. And I did do a video on this modification that you can refer back to if you like, but this is an absolute game changer to be able to type on a regular PC style keyboard instead of using the built-in chiclet keyboard on the MC10 is a game changer. It is huge. And also you're able to reconfigure the keys on the keyboard so that you can choose whether you want to use the original keyboard where the characters would appear on the original MC10 layout, or you can set it the way I have mine set up, which is to use the standard placements that you would find on a regular PC keyboard, which makes it a whole lot easier for typing. So that I think is a huge advantage when programming on the actual MC10 computer. Now you might be wondering why am I developing on the actual MC10 computer instead of just doing cross-platform development, which is normally what I would do when I'm developing games. But in this case, since I'm developing for the MC10 computer, I'm actually developing games that require this expansion device back here, which is the MCX32 SD, which provides SD card capability to the computer, as well as some other enhancements, such as enhanced version of BASIC, which gives you more capabilities, more commands, more keywords. It obviously gives you the ability to load and save directly from the SD card, which is phenomenal. It greatly improves your memory storage capabilities. So I think it is fantastic to be able to develop for this computer using these new enhanced capabilities now. But unfortunately, at least to my knowledge, there is no emulator that incorporates the functionality of the MCX32 SD, which means I have to do all of my testing on the actual hardware. So I've been doing my actual development on the real hardware to begin with. And so far it's been going uh, fairly well. And I'm going to show you later on in this video how I actually do that development in the programming environment. But before we take a look at that, let me just finish the tour of my hardware setup here. And over here, I just have an external speaker and that external speaker is connected to another enhancement that I have installed in this computer, which is a composite video output. So we'll just go around to the back and we'll take a look at that. Which you can see right here, there is a wire going into an output which combines both composite video output as well as audio. So I have the composite video output going to obviously my video display as well as the audio output is going to my external speaker right there. And now there's one more interesting thing we want to take a look at, which is a joystick. So I did just mention that this Pi Key 10 modification here does provide the functionality and capability to install or connect external joysticks to this computer, but that is not actually where this joystick over here is connected to my MC10 at the moment. It is in fact connected to another adapter that I built, which is right here. This is a selector switch that allows me to connect an external joystick, a regular nine pin Atari style joystick 
to the back of the computer. And we'll just go around and take a look at that. And I did do a video on this device as well, but this adapter connects to the serial IO port on the back. So you don't actually need to install the Pikey 10 modification. If you do install it, then you get much more functionality than you do from using this simple joystick adapter that plugs into the serial IO port. But this is much easier to connect. If you don't feel comfortable installing the full Pikey modification, this is a full plug and play device, which allows you to connect a regular Atari style joystick. But the only limitation to this is, as you can see with the switch, you have to select between two direction modes. You can either go up and down or left and right. And the reason for that is because this joystick adapter only allows the joystick to operate in two directions at a time, which is a big limitation. Obviously, you're gonna get much more functionality using the Pi Key 10 modification. That would allow you to connect regular joysticks at the front here and use all of the directions. And you can even map those directions to keys on the keyboard. But in this case, I'm designing a game that is designed to work with this serial IO joystick adapter device. Okay, so that is my hardware setup for game development for the MC10 computer. So now I'll go ahead and switch over the screen and I'll show you how I'm actually doing the programming side of this development and showing you how I develop my programs using the basic programming language. Okay, so now I want to show you a little trick that I use when I'm actually doing the programming in basic for the MC10 computer. And here I am in my program now and as you may be aware, when you're trying to list parts of a program, it can be tricky on the MC10. So for example, if I just do a listing here, you can see it doesn't stop when the screen is full. It just goes on and on and lists the entire program unless I press break like I did just there. But you can use some other options to try and format the listing output. For example, you could list an individual line number such as list 100, and then it just lists that individual line. Or you could list a range of line numbers, for example, list 10 to 40, and there just lists those specific lines that you specified. But how do you know where in the program you need to display your listing? How do you know where in the program are the lines that you actually want to see? Well, if you do your programming like I do, you may use subroutines or modules to separate your program and keep it organized. For example, here at line 40, you can see I have a module or a subroutine labeled main loop, and I have several of those subroutines set up within my program so I can easily separate the different parts of my program and it makes it a lot easier to have a modular program for programming purposes. Now how do I find out where in the program are the lines that I want to see particularly when you're making modifications to your program so for example let's say I want to add some more lines to this main loop and let me go ahead and list part of the main loop subroutine I'll say list 40 to let's say 80 and there you go so let's say I want to add some more numbers to my program so the first technique that I use in doing my program development or my game development is I use the renumber feature extensively so let's say I want to add a new line to my program you can see that these line numbers are separated by groups of 10 numbers so I have line number 40, line 50, line 60, line 70, etc., all separated in groups of 10. And the reason that is, is because I use the renumbering feature with its default settings to renumber them automatically in separations of 10 line numbers. So let's say I want to add another group of lines here, maybe between line 50 and line 60. I'll say line 51, print hello line 52 print yes and so now I have two lines line 51 and 52 and obviously 10 lines is not a big gap in order for me to add large parts of code in there so if I need to add more code all I do is simply squeeze it into the existing program and then I use the renumber feature 
just like that. And it takes a few seconds to finish renumbering because my program is quite long. And now let's say I do a listing to line, let's say 70. And there you can see now my print hello and print yes lines are evenly separated at lines 60 and line 70. Now, of course, when I add lines like this, that's going to change the location of all my other subroutines. They're going to now be a different location. So how do I know where they are now? Let's say I want to list a different subroutine somewhere else in my program. How do I know where I should do my listing? Well, of course, I could just list the whole program like this and kind of break it as I go along. So now I just happen to break it at the subroutine labeled abduction at line 430 there. But this is a very awkward way to try and find a part of the program you want to see. And you might think, well, you could just write down the line number on a piece of paper that corresponds to a particular subroutine. Well, yeah, you can do that. But then again, if you're modifying your program and adding new lines in other parts of the program, then the location of your subroutines and their associated line numbers are going to change just as it did when I added these two lines at the beginning of my program. So let me show you the technique that I use for finding subroutines that I want to list in my program. So what I do is I keep a listing of all the subroutines in my program, and I keep that listing at the end of my program. So I'll say list 4000 to the end. And here you can see the end of my program has a bunch of go-to statements with REM statements that show you the name of the particular subroutines that are associated with that line number. So for example, if we look at line 4300, it says go to 3040, and then it has a REM statement that says init. Well, I know that my init subroutine begins at line 3040. And why do I use a go to statement? Well, I could just use a REM statement and say REM 3040 init, and that would tell me that the init subroutine begins at line 3040. But then the problem is if I renumber my program, the number in the rem statement will not change. So here if I use go to statements, even though I'm not actually using these go to statements, these go to statements will never execute. They're only there for the purpose of automatically updating the line number after the go to statement when I renumber my program. So let's say we take a look at the init subroutine. Right now it's at line 3040. And so if I want to see the init subroutine, I can easily start listing from there. I could say list 3040, let's say to 3100. And there we go. We can see my init subroutine is at line 3040. But now let's say I add another line number to my program, or actually what I'll do is I'll delete the extra line numbers I added a moment ago. So if I list my program to let's say line 70 again, you can see those two lines 60 and 70, which I no longer need. So I'll just erase those. 60 and 70. So now if we go back to my listing at the bottom, list 4,000 to the end, you can see my init subroutine is still at line 3040. But now since I've erased those two line numbers, what if I want to renumber my program now? So I'll renumber it here and we'll see what happens to my init subroutine, which is currently at line 3040. Okay, the renumbering is done. And now let's go ahead and list my program again from the end, and we'll see where the init subroutine is showing as now. So now you can see, since I erased two lines, my init subroutine has moved to line 3020. So the go to statement at line 4280, it says line 4280 go to 3020 init. So this is now keeping track automatically of where all my subroutines are located. So I can easily just go down here and list the end of my program and find the subroutines I'm interested in. So for example, if I want to list the menu subroutine, which at the top of my screen here, you can see is at line 2120, I can simply list 2120 to let's say 2180, and there's my menu subroutine. So it makes it really easy to find my program listings in this way. And let's list one more time 
to see the end of my program, which shows all the listings. Now you can see that I have many subroutines and they don't all fit on a single screen, which is why the very last entry, which is at line 4340, go to 4020, and it says modules, that is the beginning of these module listing. So if I list 4020 to let's say 4050, you can see my modules actually begin at line 4020, and that also will get updated. So if I want to actually list the listing of my modules, I can simply list 4020 to let's say 4100. Let's say I want to see more of the modules, I can list from 4100 to 4180, let's say, and there are some more modules. So this way it makes it very easy to find the modules that I want to look at when I'm doing a listing of part of my program. And these line numbers following the go-to statements will automatically get updated every time I renumber my program. So I'll never run out of available line numbers to use. I can just insert more numbers as I need them and simply renumber my program every time. And these module listings will keep track of where my modules are. So these go-to statements, like I said, will never execute. These are simply for reference to make sure that these line numbers automatically get updated after a renumber function, but they're very handy at indicating for me where my different modules exist in the program. So let's go ahead and list the start subroutine. List 1280 to, and the only thing you have to really do is decide how many numbers you want to list. And you know that your program is going to be separated in groups of 10 so the line numbers are going to be separated by 10. So if I want to list a number of lines that I think will fit on the screen, in this case, I could list, let's say, line 1280 to line 1340. So that should be about, what, six line numbers or so? And there, so it fits on the screen. And there we go. So I hope that is a useful little tip for you. And now that I have my listing all <laughs> arranged properly, and easily organized. Let's go ahead and run the program. And we'll take a quick peek at my new alien invasion program called them.